How difficult do you think it is if as a man you need to properly process how to talk, act, and respond to your female colleagues, or else you will get yourself in big, life-altering trouble? If I was a man, and I'm not a man, but if I was a man, I wouldn't hire a woman. I wouldn't do it. And I said all the time, and I say that, and that is something that women need to consider when they're talking about this stuff. When you are saying that a man complimenting you and saying, oh, I really, I, oh, I really like your outfit today, um, is a form of sexism. What is the, if you're a man, why hire a woman, right? So you no, fought no. all this time to be able to get into the workforce only to say these are going to be the rules. You know, if you say anything, even if you compliment me, if you, if you look at me, anything, I'm going to have a reason to fight you. And by the way, you're going to want to settle and pay me because even just the stain of an accusation is enough to ruin men. So what wow. is, what, if you're, if you're a guy, right, in this society, in this Me Too environment, in this, in this uh, litigation rich environment of misogyny and sexism and all of these claims, what is the value add? What's the, the risk, you know, the, the benefit and the risk? I just, I can't do the analysis and say, I'd just be like, no, I'm just gonna hire one. Give me all the men. You are straight off the stage where you were just talking about lean in and a new study you've just released indicating that women are actually having less access to mentorship and to their bosses than, than they were even a year ago. What's going on here? Yeah, it's really important. So today we just released a lean in survey monkey study that shows that 60% of male managers in the United States are afraid to do a one-on-one -on -one activity with a woman, including having a meeting. I mean, can you believe that? 60%. A senior man is nine times more likely to hesitate to travel with a woman and six times more likely to hesitate to have a dinner with a woman. And the problem with that is women already weren't getting the same mentorship that men were, particularly women of color. And no one's ever gotten a promotion without getting a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And so I think men and women need to be able to travel together. They need to be able to go to meetings together, go to meals together. All of that can be done in public spaces, but those one-on-one -on -one conversations. And if there's a man out there who doesn't want to have work dinners with a woman, then he shouldn't have work dinners with a man. You know, group lunches for everyone, if that's how they feel. It seems like the movements of the past year or so, the Time's Up movement, Me Too, have actually had real negative implications for many women in the workplace. What's your message to corporate America about this? So I don't believe they've had negative implications. I believe they're overwhelmingly positive because half of women have been sexually harassed. But the thing is, it's not enough. Modern women are difficult to understand. Women said they want men to keep the workspace professional and to respect them. Men did, and now they are frustrated and angry. Someone will say women asked to be professional, not to be isolated. Well, everyone thought so as well. But the problem is, with the manner women asked for it, Women used the Me Too movement to ask for it and did more than that. Women ruined a lot of men's careers. It is said that in some industries, 9 of 10 women have reported sexual assault. Men are kind of living a life in their workplace and another life in their home and with friends. Men are careful of the kind of jokes they make in the presence of women, and they avoid keeping eye contact so as for those women not to think they are staring, they do all so that they do not leave unnecessary sensual impressions on women or else they are on their way out of the company and possibly never to get employed again because they have sexual assault record. A woman said she had to get a car even though it was not convenient for her financially because her workplace is far from her home and many times she leaves late and the men that stay close to her area always try to avoid giving her a drive. And she noticed this started when she took some of her feminist books to work and left it on her desk so she can read during the breaks. I realize how these guys did not want to take a chance and get messed up. In terms of my career, I should be able to deal with people even if I don't agree with them. As long as I can nicely tell you you are being disrespectful. But I have never witnessed this in my life. I am not a rude person. Like I'm not a person to go and smoke with people. Unless you are rude, then I will call you out. So I'm talking the whole podcast. Pearl keeps going, Esther, you need to learn to listen. Esther, you over talk everybody. Esther, I'm thinking, if you don't want me to f speak, why did you invite me on this podcast? Imagine having this woman as a colleague at work. You will definitely have yourself to blame if you hit on this woman, especially when she doesn't like you. The worst part of the Me Too movement is that it is possible that the majority of the past year's accusations are false. Some people claim they are since no evidence is considered only women's testimonies. Think about it. 
Why would someone want to do something that they know they will regret for the rest of their life? Especially when this person has no power, no influence, no money, the person has no backup. Even top executives and CEO that could have some backing up are avoiding women because they have had their shares of the Me Too accusation from women. In fact, some companies have gone down due to the Me Too movement. How then do you expect some 9 to 5 guy or a guy just waiting for his paycheck to still sexually assault women? Only a dumb guy would do that. Here is a story I found online. I am sharing it here because the person shared it himself. Shout out to this guy. At work as an overnight stock associate many years ago, I would help several others with work they would do. Let me break it down to the most common areas I would help. Two associates in paper and chemical would nearly constantly get nearly a third of the entire load, half of which would be pallets of heavy things like bleach, laundry detergent, and other liquid cleaners in boxes that weighed nearly 50 pounds each. One associate, I would every night go and unload and stock the heavy boxes of printing paper and take away the pallets that built up due to me having one of the pallet jacks. One associate, I would unload the heavy furniture with and downstack the incredibly tall pallets of housewares after I would take away the pallets. One associate, I would help break down the pallets of hardware and sporting goods onto the carts they would use and help throw the cart for the last few minutes before lunch break lunch at 1.30 a.m. Then would sit next to this associate during lunch where one or the other of us brought movies that everybody could watch. So can you guess which one of the four above got back to my fairly new wife that there might be anything going on between us? Anyone. Here I will list which associates went with which. The two paper and chem associates were both younger men. The associate with the copy paper was a 62-year-old woman who was 4'9 tall the furniture and housewares associate was a pretty young girl that was 4'11 and asked for my help with these every night. The hardware and sporting goods associate I had actually first met in high school and had not run across again for years was male. So if you haven't guessed yet, the only one that was a problem was the young woman. Why her? I do not know. I actually helped her for the least amount of time. And when she began to ask if I would help her commit insurance fraud with her car, I pretty much stayed away. In fact, my wife only started hearing these rumors a week after the girl had been fired for not showing up for her shift. This fight with my wife had happened because I was helping a pretty girl. Never mind that it was only for a few weeks because she literally was not with the company very long at all and mostly was in cosmetics, which I was not helpful in at all. The 62-year-old lady was the one I went out of my way to help the most and nobody said a thing about me helping her. Even though I was about the only person in the company she would smile at. A fun fact the first time I met her, she chewed my ass out for putting her pallets in the wrong place, thus making more work for her. After this, I cut off helping any pretty woman in the store with anything other than pallets, and I would often not even do that and instead have someone else grab those while I did other things. It was about self-preservation, I could not defend myself from accusations lobbed at me like this. So, the accusation of a woman nearly cost him his marriage. This is a near case scenario. What about the ones that have cost the man their jobs, marriage, and friendship because society even some wives will believe a woman instead of her husband? As the story said, the reason why men isolate women in the workplace is for self-preservation. Women should be happy and not frustrated that they got what they wanted who gets unhappy for achieving their goals? Getting isolated at work is just one of a few side effects. Me Too has ruined a lot more for modern women than did them any good. That's all for today on Latest Juice. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like my previous videos. Don't forget to hit that like button, click the subscribe button, and also turn on the notification bell to be the first to know when I drop a new video. Share this video with whomever you would like to watch it. Thanks for watching.